Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Connor Canny podcast with me, Connor Canny. And in today's podcast, I want to talk about growing up in a dysfunctional family. Um, now, many people, there are many people out there who grew up in dysfunctional families. Um, there are people who are who who grew who grew up in completely uh like horrific horrible the worst kind of conditions you could ever imagine then there are people who grew up in you know pretty rough conditions then there are people that grew up in a dysfunctional family which had the extra component of being um having some good nurturing love within that family also right sometimes from the same parent uh which is even more confusing growing up you know and um oftentimes for those of us that was like that was the environment i personally grew up in you know i received a lot of love and support um And also a lot of uh, emotional, verbal abuse. A bit bit of physical abuse, a handful of times, but nothing like where the physical abuse was was so consistent and so bad throughout my life where it was like, oh my God, I was constantly physically abused or anything. No, it wasn't like that. But um, mostly it was a mental, emotional, verbal, psychological kind of of, uh, abuse, like consistently from my dad. Um, for much of my life, not 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 when I was a very young child. It wasn't like that then. When I um, the first time I can remember like anything was some sometime between the age of seven and ten was when it started to get bad, and it just got worse and worse throughout my life. Uh, as I got older, as I became a teenager, as I wanted to push boundaries more and do my own thing, you know, people, parents who want to control their children. Um, really have a problem with, you know, when when the more the child the child wants to rebel as they become a teenager and start questioning things and start wanting more freedom, the more the parent, um, the controlling parent wants to nail down and stop them from doing what they want to do and constantly criticize them. Now, um, one of one of the th- anyone who's watching this who's clicked on this video. Um, who's listening to this I'm assuming that you you either have no idea what it's like to grow up in a dysfunctional family and you're you've simply either listened to my other podcasts on this channel or you've um and you've come across this one or you've simply you never heard of me before all this podcast or you've come you've come across here come across this channel or um you are someone who who has, uh, who knows what it's like growing up in a dysfunctional family, right? Some of you may still be in a dysfunctional place, um, and you, you, you know the burden of what it's like. Like some people have, everyone's at different points in their in their journey of uh, going from a dysfunctional family or escaping it or healing from it or whatever. Some people never do. Some people are in dysfunctional relationships or their life as well. Um, but if you are someone who has grown up in a dysfunctional family, you know, and you try to explain it to other people that have grown up, that have grown up in a healthy environment, right? When you some 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 of them, not all of them, to be fair, some of them don't understand this, right? They they can only ever see things through the, especially when it's not complete, like something where you can really point to it, like sexual abuse or extreme physical abuse. With the emotional abuse, right? Emotional abuse is such a grey area, right? That people that don't grow up in that environment don't really um, don't understand what, what you mean sometimes when you say it. especially if like my my father my dad was did a lot of good stuff as well right but 90% of the stuff 80 to 90 percent of, of his attitude and towards towards me and my brother and my mum was one of contempt control nastiness 
uh, criticism, putting down, right, um, which came from his parents. Um, and the whole, the whole, uh, w when we grow up in this environment, and you try to explain it to other people who haven't grown up, sometimes they they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They can't understand your, what you're talking about, right? Uh, then ne then they've never experienced it. They're they're only viewing it fr through the prism, uh, through the lens of um, somebody who has grown up in a, in a functional family that that got all of the uh, positive things that many of us didn't get growing up. To be fair to to me, um, to be fair to my dad, I did get a lot of positive things that people that from my dad and my mum for that people that a lot of people don't get as well in terms of love and support um but i also got a lot of uh you know abuse like not so much from my mum really but from my dad my mum made mistakes and stuff she wasn't perfect but the main brunt of the whole thing was just just my dad really um and what's the point here my point is uh there might be people out there who are listening to this, who are watching this video, who listen to this podcast, who understand exactly where I'm coming from when I say this, because people that that go through that that grow up that have a um, all of their needs met as a child, right, and don't have to that they have all, one they have all of their needs met, right, and two they don't have the things that we had to worry about growing up, they don't have the negative effect on them growing up, right? They don't have the subconscious, the later, uh, you know, when we transition into adults, the later, the, the, the things that we were missing and they don't understand how it affects us, right? They also don't understand how, um, uh, you know, the, that we're like struggling. It's like we're walking around with... Um, you know, with like weights, you know, the weights that athletes use on the legs to train when they run. It's like we're, we're they're walking down a hill. We're, we're, we're wearing, we're walking with weights on, right? Trying to do the same thing that they're doing in the form of all the baggage from our lack of self-esteem, our, uh, you know, uh, the, the neurological pathways that may not have been um, built the you know the sp mental emotional spiritual muscle that may not have not been built um in order to achieve certain things or have certain attitudes or feel certain things right or certain ideas about ourself right we're walking it's almost like our programming's off right when you grow up in an abusive environment like our nervous system also there's a lot of unexpressed emotion that we were never allowed to feel. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, unexpressed emotion that was caused by things that our body, our nervous system had to react to that other people didn't have to react to. Be it screaming, shouting, anger, and some people, like I say, have been physically abused, and obviously some people have been sexually abused. But that's uh, I'm not really qualified to talk about that because uh, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, but I mean, a handful of times, you know, I've been there was some physical uh altercations and stuff but really um not that it's right ever right but uh really that was wasn't the majority of times that was only a handful of times right for the most part my dad wasn't wasn't really into hitting kids because he was hit he was beaten as a child as a lot, a lot of people of his generation were people that were born in the 60s a lot of their their parents were born you know in the um 40s 30s 20s his parents were born in the 20s you know um and that the, that generation was raised by people that were born in like the 1880s 1890s 1900s 1910s you know um so like they didn't know what the fuck they were doing but for the most part my dad didn't really uh wasn't a physical thing he was physically domineering and he could take up space when he went to be a bully right but uh, that was a whole other thing. And he was extremely aggressive from time to time. There's a lot of subtle putting down and stuff. But anyway, the point I'm, I'm saying, I'm making, what was I saying? I'm saying uh, when we grow up in these environments 
uh, there are a lot of things that we need to we we a lot of baggage emotional mental even physiological baggage like i said stuff that's ingrained in our nervous system that isn't ingrained in the nervous systems of people who grew up in healthy environments you know um and oftentimes we can't uh we we don't they don't have a clue what it's like you know at all and it can be very hurtful right it can be very hurtful it can be very frustrating trying to explain it to them especially if you're with a you, you're like now you've healed from it a little bit or i've i've pretty much healed from it um but you know the 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 healing process is long um well, it took me probably three years, and along that time, there was uh, there have been intermittent times where it kind of like it's almost like PTSD, where it comes back and you start something happens because of something that's happened in your childhood, you know, um, or your teenage years, or even as a young adult growing up um, with your family. This is my experience, anyway. Um, some you know things can happen and you can you it can just trigger you you know to get angry to get upset whatever you you still have um certain behaviors in the same way that regardless of whether you grow up in a dysfunctional family or a healthy family even if you grow up in a healthy family you're definitely going to be influenced by the things that you we all are influenced by the things that we do unconsciously you know by uh that we've learned by um by the nurturing that we got with the examples of parents or parent we have we some of us grow up with single parents um but what was my point there sorry i've gone off on a bit of tangent here um yeah that we we all we all know all of us that grow up in a really dysfunctional family we all know like the feeling the horrible feelings of just like all of the shit that we had to put up with that other people didn't have to put up with, they don't, they're never going to, they're never going to understand, right? And you know, it's really, uh, I'm really fortunate that my mum has been very, very good over the last three years of like uh, nurturing me and letting me do what I want to do and letting me heal and talking to me and almost being a therapist to some degree, because um, she obviously went through a lot of stuff as well which I'm not going to get into in this podcast, but um, basically, the, you know, it's really difficult when we when we grow up in these environments and the healing process. So, first of all, I want to say to anyone out there who's listening, I know what it's like, I've been through it, and I've now feel like I'm totally um, back to where, I'm not back to, but at a place where I've healed from all of that, you know, and I'm very, I feel very much consider myself very fortunate and lucky in that regard because a lot of people don't, and a lot of people go through things with both parents. And like I said, like whilst my mum made some mistakes and stuff, she it was never like the horrible um, nastiness that I received at the, from the uh, the words and attitude and energy I received from my my father, right? But. I suppose in this little podcast, I just wanted to put it out there that it's an idea for anyone, you know, who's gone through it. I know what it's like. And, um, you know, so I know what it's also like to tell other people who don't understand. And I know what it's like to uh, have them almost make you feel like you're the one in the wrong. Like there's nothing, especially people that know my dad who don't who don't have a clue what he's really like right they they only see glimmers of tiny things they'll never understand right they'll never understand that why would they like don't blame them or why would they when when people are manipulative and people are telling one side of the story to make out as if they haven't done anything wrong it, you know it's like people can't believe how much much of a liar and how much of a how much of a kick people that some sick and twisted individuals like my dad could get out of certain things, you know, the word get out of uh, bullying his children, right? And that comes from being bullied by his mum and uh, being put down all the time by his dad, essentially, right? Um, and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of us go through that and these things are always passed down through the generations, you know? 
whether it be the most horrific kind of abuse, sexual abuse or physical abuse or emotional abuse. And obviously sexual abuse and physical abuse are forms of emotional abuse as well. But, you know, the verbal abuse, the non-physical that we that my, many of us have suffered, that's extreme, that people think, you know, people say, oh, weren't we all abused? Um, you know, people have said to me, friends of my dad have said this to me before. Oh, you know, people, because they don't know what he's really like. So people are... Um, you know, everyone, every generation. You know, I remember when I was growing up, it was the norm to hit kids. It's not. It's not like that. It's not. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like serious mind games and shit, and uh, just complete contempt and nastiness, and constantly gaslighting and putting things on someone else, on your children and other people. Uh, you know the control element not allowing you to do what you want to do uh the not the real horribleness the bullying the you know the aggression all that shit right um they don't know, know what kind of pieces of shit some of us had to deal with as fathers and mothers you know um that being said i do still feel sorry for my dad that he turned out like that because he did have a very good side to him as well this is what happens when people grow up in fucked up environments where they're not allowed to be themselves he was never allowed to be himself you know so he didn't want us to be himself now he learned and changed he wasn't as bad in some ways as his parents were to him but in some ways he was worse than them in some ways you know and they were more ignorant and uh they grew go went on to be great grandparents and went on to be much kind, really kind. Well, my grandma wants to be really kind, you know, you know um, for the most part. And my granddad, for the most part, was kind. But you know, he still like put his son down all the time, like all his life. And um, my grandma was like, you know, controlling and nasty and abusive when she was younger to my dad and his brothers. Um, but you know, so I do feel sorry for my dad. But it's like. There are plenty of other people that had just as bad and, and way worse upbringings than my dad that didn't go on to do that. Now, at the same time, even though I say that, people say that, I, I still, things affect people in different ways, don't they? So that that's obviously how he was affected by it and that's how he dealt with it. And he's a, he's a prime example, my dad, of someone who never dealt with what happened to him when he was younger. He was in complete denial about it. His parents were in completely, complete denial. His whole, fam, whole family was dysfunctional and complete denial about it constantly looking to scapegoat me scapegoat my brother scapegoat my mum to a degree not really my mum that much but from them from to them but definitely scapegoat me and my brother it's how dysfunctional families survive they can't look at the truth or look at themselves look at the dog shit fucking poison behavior that's going on right and don't get me wrong my family gave me a lot of love and support as well they're not the worst family in the world but um you know you know in terms of the most controlling the most fucked up like my dad definitely in some ways, was uh, was probably turned out the worst. Um, you know, a lot uh, swings and roundabouts. You know, did a lot of good things, did a lot of bad things. Could have been worse, could have been better. But it's not like it, there is a true part of it that is a genuine, horrible, just nasty dog shit fucking game where he just wants to bully his children. Uh, it was horrible, like growing up in a lot of ways but um you know there are people that have been treated way worse than me as well I'm not, I'm not under any illusion about that but there are also m plenty of people most people were not have not experienced that kind of, especially of my generation in a first world country have not experienced that kind of emotional abuse that i experienced right back in the day it was more black it was more gray area because people were less con less aware of um the effects that things had on children, right? But, you know, it's not like this guy isn't an intelligent, informed guy about a lot of things, you know? Um, and like I say, I do have a lot of sympathy for him, but um, it is what it is. Anyway, in the next podcast, guys and girls, I hope that has, uh, some of you have gained, just by listening to me talking about it, a bit of, can some of you can relate well, first of all, I hope none of you, I don't, I don't wish it upon any of you that you've gone through that, that you can relate. But I mean, um, I hope that you, if you have gone through something similar to me in your life, that you, you, um, that I'm 
giving you some like hope that you can heal from it and you can uh like and some inspiration you know and just someone else to talk to there's, to know that there's someone else out there there's plenty of us out there people that have gone through worse than us even that um you know have and that's by the way that's not to undermine anyone's experience growing up because things affect people in different ways and stuff so when i say worse that's and better and worse you know there that's um a loose term but you know what i mean um but yeah so anyway in the next podcast i'll i think i'm going to talk more about like things you can do to heal from you know uh bad things that happen that happen in your childhood right things i personally use and things i find useful that have helped me to become a stronger person and to heal from the emotional scars of the past and try to move forward into becoming a stronger person so thank you for listening to the corner canny podcast and tune in for the next one bye bye peace and love